to what extent is it necessary for a state to control private actors for their conduct to be attributed to a state under the law of state responsibility? That issue has given rise to a very lively debate in the international case law, in particular with respect to the attribution of ITIL violations committed by armed groups to a state. The issue was first addressed by the International Court of Justice in the famous 1986 Nicaragua case brought by Nicaragua against the United States. The case dates back to the Cold War period. The US-backed government of Nicaragua was overthrown by the Sandinista movement, which was inspired by the Marxist-Leninist ideology and thus opposed by the US government. As a result, the United States decided to arm, train and support the armed group fighting that government, called the Contras. However, the Contras committed serious violations of international law, including IHL violations. One of the issues the court had to settle was whether those alleged violations could be attributed to the United States. The test that the court used was the effective control test. What does effective control mean? The control must clearly go beyond the mere support taking the form of financing, organizing, training, supplying or equipping the relevant non-state actors. The state must be involved in planning the operations, choosing the targets and the provision of operational support throughout. In the words of the court, the test requires that the control be exercised in respect of each operation in which the alleged violations occurred. So the state must be able to control each military operation without necessarily exercising control over each wrongful conduct committed in the course of that operation. In any case, the threshold is very high and has been criticized as being impossible to prove in facts. In the Nicaragua case, the court indeed ruled that the test was not met. The same issue was re-examined by the ICTY in 1999, in the Tadic case. Tadic was at the head of a Serbian armed group, fighting against the, Bos the Bosnian armed forces within Bosnia, a newly independent state. Tadic's armed group was supported at that time by the former Yugoslavia, ruled by Slobodan Milosevic. The tribunal inquired whether such support could be considered as a foreign intervention in the internal conflict in Bosnia, with the effect of internationalizing that conflict. This question was of utmost importance, since in case of internationalization, more war crimes would be available to prosecute Tadic. The tribunal decided to answer that question by resorting to a standard of attribution provided by the law of state responsibility, in particular the control test. The tribunal rejected the high threshold established by the International Court of Justice in the Nicaragua case, as far as the attribution of acts of organized armed groups is concerned. For such groups, the relevant test for the ICTY was not the effective control, but the, the overall control one. Again, what does that mean? Like the effective control test, and I quote the tribunal, it must go beyond the mere financing and equipping of non-state armed forces, and involving also participation in the planning and supervision of military operations. However, unlike the effective control test, it is not required that the control be exercised on each military operation. That ruling has raised significant debates and concerns. 
the international community of scholars indeed started to fear the fragmentation of international law, as different institutions employ different tests for the same question. However, in 2007, the International Court of Justice, in the case of the application of the Genocide Convention, in which the court considered whether the genocide committed by Serbian paramilitary forces could be attributed to the former Yugoslavia, paved the way for a reconciliatory approach. It first recalled that the only suitable test for the purpose of attribution and state responsibility was still the effective control test, which was more demanding than the overall control test. However, it admitted that, and I quote the court, insofar as the overall control test is employed to determine whether or not an armed conflict is international, which was the sole question which the ICTY was called upon to decide in the Tadic case, it may well be that the test is applicable and suitable. In other words, we may argue that there is no contradiction between the two tests and no fragmentation of international law on that issue. The effective control test is suitable for the purpose of establishing the international responsibility of a state, in particular for the purpose of attributing private conduct to states. And the overall control test, which has been endorsed later by other international courts, such as the ICC, is suitable for the purpose of qualifying an armed conflict and, in particular, for the purpose of determining if a non-international armed conflict has been internationalized by the intervention of a foreign state.